for century law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. He's Hacker. I like a good serial killer documentary. He hasn't taken the pounding that wide receivers take. Uh, it's just a pound job, and, and guys are tired towards that, that four minutes. And he doesn't shy away from opinion. I would be lying to you if I said I had not heard things. They're like a bad rash. You hear a lot of things. Some are true, some aren't. It's Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. And a very good Friday evening to you, Jacksonville. It is Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, 92.5 FM with Dylan Denmark. The Hacker Ryan Green with you. Glad you are with us to close out the week. And what a week it has been here in the National Football League. What a week it's been out at the players. What a week it has been for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a lot going on this weekend from the selection show on Sunday. You got Florida, Alabama tonight in the quarterfinal of the SEC tournament. Obviously, the players will be decided. Who knows what's going to happen with the NFL offseason. As crazy as it's been, spring football is in full session. So we got a lot to get into over the next two hours. Glad you're spending your Friday evening with us. Guest lineup coming up in less than 20 minutes. My buddy Cecil Shorts, former wide receiver for your Jacksonville Jaguars. Cecil will come on to recap what was a very interesting five-day period here in Duval County. So Cecil Shorts about 20 minutes away, coming up uh, about 8.45 or so. We will head to Baltimore. Our Ravens guy, Luke Jones, WNST Radio. Let's talk. A little bit of Devin DuVernay. Let's talk a little bit of Ronald Darby. Two Ravens from last year that are both on their way to Jacksonville. And let's talk a little Derrick Henry now with the Baltimore Ravens. So Luke Jones up in Baltimore in about 45 minutes. Former Jaguar Cecil Shorts in less than 20 minutes. Every night here on Hacker After Dark, we do kick it off with a big deal of the night. And Dylan... Denmark. Let's do that right now. Time now for the big deal of the night. What's the big deal? What is the big deal? No big deal. It is a big deal. On Hacker After Dark. So there were a lot of big deals I could choose from, so I'm not just going to limit it to one this evening. I'm going to live a little dangerously. I'm going to give you guys about two or three big deals as I see them. Uh, number one was Calvin Ridley was introduced today up in Nashville. I'm sure most of you have seen the comments by now. I'm paraphrasing. I don't have the exact quote. But he was asked, why the Titans? And he said, well, uh, they got DeAndre Hopkins, and they got a good defense, and, you know, this, that, and the other. We played them twice. I could see, you know, how competitive they were. Then he goes, I would have liked to remain in Jacksonville. There were two or three things that just didn't work out, and, at the end of his statement, he said, and the money was also great here in Nashville. He took the money. There's nothing wrong with that. He absolutely took the money. Tennessee offered him more money than anybody else, and that is why Calvin Ridley is a Tennessee Titan. He didn't talk about the city of Nashville, the team culture, the organization, nothing along those lines. He said the money was good. He took the money. It's a cash grab. Good on him. $50 million guaranteed. I can't say that I fault him. One thing, Denmark, that I have noticed, and you'll probably know this about me, um, I tend to remember things and hold grudges a little bit. No, never. And not that I'm fanboy when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Far from it. I like to consider myself an objective broadcast journalist. But every once in a while, my feathers do get ruffled with some of my brethren in other cities. The Titan media, most of them, not all, but most up in Nashville, have just... How can I describe this on on our show without getting in trouble? Um, They really, really, really like Calvin Ridley. They tripping. Yes. They're tripping. they, they, They like themselves some Calvin Ridley. And I get it. You know, I enjoyed Calvin's time here. I enjoyed hearing from him in the locker room, sitting in on his press conferences, watching him at practice. I mean, I get it. But holy moly, 
They're talking about he's the missing piece that could be a Super Bowl contender. He's going to lead the NFL in receiving. This is all the Titans needed to turn the corner, yada, yada, yada. As I often say, March is the time of hope, the time of wonderment and dreams of what could be down the road. Unfortunately, reality sets in in September, October, and November. And while I don't doubt Calvin Ridley has a nice season for the Titans, we still don't know anything really about Will Levis. We don't know how the whole D-hop Calvin Ridley thing is going to work itself out. Tony Pollard as well. Man, I just think they're getting awfully, awfully high expectations. They're drinking the sauce when it comes to Calvin Ridley right now. And I will also tell you this, again, not holding grudges or anything, but as much as they're talking Ridley, they're bad-mouthing Jacksonville. Stolen from the Jaguars. Uh, Jacksonville, well, what a devastating loss. Just devastating. Calvin Ridley not going back to Jacksonville. All this. They better hope that Gabe Davis doesn't have a week where he had more receiving yards and catches than Calvin Ridley in 2024. Because I will be intolerable to Titans media on social media. I will be intolerable. I will be that guy. If Gabe Davis has a two- or three-week stretch where he's putting up better numbers than Calvin Ridley, oh, my gosh, it is open season on a lot of these Titan media members. Just nauseating some of the things these guys are saying. Now, maybe not the TV radio guys, but the podcasters and all these other guys. I mean, good grief, man. Give me a break. So kudos to Calvin for basically admitting it was a money grab. No flaw in that. A lot of people, darn near every player I know, would have probably done the same thing. But I'm almost turning against Calvin Ridley, not because I don't like him and not because I'm not necessarily rooting for him, but because of everything that is being said by the Titan media and fan base. And maybe I just follow too many of these people in Nashville, but it almost makes me want to puke some of the things they're saying about how Calvin Ridley is the end-all, be-all of existence, and he is going to make the Titans a Super Bowl force. No, he's not. You cannot stop anybody on defense. Your offensive line is still horrible. Give me a break. That is big deal number one. Big deal number two is Eric Armstead. The Jaguars did not get Calvin Ridley. Instead, they got Eric Armstead, big-time defensive tackle from the San Francisco 49ers. And I've tried not to make this comparison because I've heard this comparison a lot in the last couple of days. But it is hard to not see similarities between Calais Campbell when he came to Jacksonville and Eric Armstead when he's coming to Jacksonville. Calais, I believe, spent eight or nine years in Arizona, was an unbelievable Arizona Cardinal. He comes to Jacksonville, I believe he was 30 or 31 years old. And the three years Calais Campbell had here, he will go down as a top 10, top 5 free agent acquisition in franchise history. Can Eric Armstead be the same? Plays the same position, right? Big, huge body on the defensive line. Coming from eight years from an NFC West team. Coming to Jacksonville to team with Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. There are certainly, you know, Campbell was a team captain in Arizona. Armstead, a team captain with the 49ers. Certainly a lot of comparables that you can say about Eric Armstead and his arrival in 2024 compared to when Calais Campbell arrived here in 2017. Think about that. 2017 is when Calais Campbell came here. Where does that time go? So that's just food for thought, right? I know a lot of people are saying it, and I didn't want to buy into that. But again, it is hard to ignore the similarities between the two. Again, Eric Armstead is one of the highlights of what I think was a very good free agent crop for Jacksonville. From Armstead to Mitch Morse to Ronald Darby. By the way, those three guys right there, Darby, Morse, and Armstead, all 30 years old or older. Tells me two things. Tells me the Jaguars believe they can win in 2024. Also kind of tells me Trent Baalke believes he might need to win in 2024. 
You sign three guys that are going to be big time contributors for you, thirty years age of old, thirty years of age or older. To me, it makes me think again. You believe you can compete in twenty twenty four, and why shouldn't they believe that? Back to back nine and eight seasons. But you wonder if Balky and maybe even Doug Peterson to an extent believe that 2024 is a big year for them and their futures here with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Of course, Gabe Davis, Darnell Savage, Devin Dumervay, Dumerday, all these guys, uh, Mac Jones as well. Big time free agent hall this week, bringing in seven guys. We talked about this last night. You only keep 53 on the roster. Jaguars have seven guys added in the last six days that will be on that 53-man roster. What is that? 15% of your roster in 2024 was brought in here since last Sunday. It's been an active week for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Baloo mentioned Caleb on chase on at the two-minute drill. Nothing against Caleb on, but from a football standpoint, good riddance, man. The sooner... We can all absolutely erase the 2020 NFL draft from our minds, the better off we're all going to be. The worst draft in franchise history. The worst. I used to think it was the Derek Harvey draft. It was at 2008, and that was a stinker as well. That draft sucked too. But to have three picks in the top 42 of the 2020 draft, to have that type of draft capital, three selections, among the top 42 picks, and you end up with C.J. Henderson, Caleb on Chason, and LaVisca Chenault, all of whom, four calendar years later, are no longer here? Oh, if that isn't the ultimate indictment for just how awful Dave Caldwell was as a general manager, I don't know what is. Absolutely putrid and pathetic. And that's why the Jaguars were the laughing stock of the league for a long time. For absolute nonsense, like drafting C.J. Henderson, Caleb on Chason, and LaVisca Chenault all in the top 42. What a waste the 2020 NFL draft was, at least in the first couple of rounds. Good night. And the final big deal of the night, and we'll get more into this as the days and weeks go on, You know, I'm old enough to remember when the AFC South was thought to be a laughing stock because it was as recently as last August. Jacksonville was going to run away with the division. Everybody else was rebuilding. Boring division, worst division in the NFL. Well, fast forward to where we are now in March of 2024. The Indianapolis Colts were one win away from a playoff berth with a backup quarterback. They get Anthony Richardson back. They keep all their guys from Michael Pittman, Grover Stewart. A lot of rumors out there that Sneed, the corner from Kansas City, potentially is on his way to Indy. Indianapolis looks pretty good all of a sudden. Shane Steichen did a great job there. Tennessee is spending a billion dollars on Lloyd Cushenberry and Tony Pollard and Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins. Out with the old, in with the new. It's a new system, a new philosophy in Nashville. It's no longer going to be run the ball 40 times a game. It might be pass the ball 40 times a game. Houston, C.J. Stroud, Tank Dell, Nico Collins. They just bring in Joe Mixon. They bring in Daniil Hunter to go with Will Anderson. And then right here in Jacksonville, Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, of course, Trevor. You bring in Eric Armstead with Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. The AFC South, in a very, very short amount of time, has gone from maybe the worst division in football to potentially one of the best and potentially one of the most interesting heading into 2024. Kudos to all four franchises because they were all awful in the last three years. Every one of them was awful. In the last three years, the Jaguars back in 2021, the Texans obviously were awful until this past year. The Colts were awful in 2022. Tennessee's been awful now for a couple of years. But all of a sudden, brand new head coaches, right? Doug Peterson's the longest tenured. He's only entering year three and brand new quarterbacks. Anthony Richardson and Indy, 
C.J. Stroud in Houston, Trevor here in Jacksonville, and the elder statesman of the group, yeah, the oldest one by a couple of months, is 24-year-old Will Levis in Nashville. The AFC South has gone from dog meat to pretty compelling stuff, again, in a very, very short amount of time. It is a Friday evening here in Jacksonville, Florida. We're glad you're with us here on Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, and 92.5 FM. Coming up next, a guy that played for two of those AFC South teams. He's a former Houston Texan. He's also a former Jacksonville Jaguar, my buddy Cecil Shorts. You get him every week during football season. You get him periodically during the offseason, including to recap what was a crazy week in free agency right here in the city of Jacksonville. Former Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Shorts with you next on Hacker After Dark. This is 1010XL. I had a dream. To bring Jacksonville Sports Radio true. Off the 1010XL. Jacksonville Sports Radio. Hacker here, and after my announcement of starting Awaken 180 weight loss, everyone is asking me about it. So I'll update you. After just two weeks, I'm already down 25 pounds. 25 pounds in two weeks. And to be more detailed, I actually dropped 32 pounds of fat, but I've gained 7 pounds of muscle. Not because I'm working out with Awaken 180, but because I'm more active, walking more, and playing longer with my son, Little Hack. All the rewards I thought would take months to achieve, I'm seeing after only two weeks. Am I starving myself? Definitely not. You think this guy would choose a calorie counting diet? I'm eating to lose weight with Awaken 180 and my results speak for themselves. It's been simple. My coach lays out the plan. We make adjustments and every week the weight falls off. No pills, no injections. I'm doing it the right way. Do what Mike, Matt, and I did and make the call to Awaken 180. 844-346-1800 or online at Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Dot com. Visionaries, builders, and doers, are you ready to change the world? Miller Electric is your opportunity to shape the future. Miller Electric is leading the charge in electric vehicle technology with our state-of-the-art EV innovation design center. We're working to create a sustainable future. We're also the proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, powering their performance at the brand new Miller Electric Center. Miller Electric, we provide competitive pay, unbeatable benefits. Apply today. MillerCareers.com, Miller Electric, an equal opportunity employer. Ready to join the team? The Jaguars and our stadium partners are hosting a job fair Wednesday, April 3rd to find enthusiastic new faces to serve as ushers, ticket takers, concessionaires, security, and more for the upcoming season. Stop by the Fields Auto Group Terrace Suite at Everbank Stadium from 3 till 8 p.m. on April 3rd to apply. Professional dress, a pen, and a smile are all you need, so stop by the job fair to be a part of Jaguars Game Day. Equal Opportunity Employer. Bueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice aroni? Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Comedian Whitney Cummings is coming to Florida Theater Saturday, November 16th. If you like to laugh, for a chance to win tickets, text keyword Whitney to the text line covered by Lifetime Flooring at 641-1010 now. The Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute is now offering online scheduling for new patient appointments for all of their positions. Simply schedule your appointment on your cell phone, tablet, or desktop. JOI is the first orthopedic practice in North Florida to offer this feature to patients. To schedule your appointment online, visit JOI.net and click on the button at the top of the page. If you'll be using insurance, be sure and have your information handy. JOI, where the pros go. Attention veterans, if 
you have a VA loan, you need to listen to this, especially if your current rate is higher than 6.5%. Now is the time to take advantage of the federal government's VA Streamline Refinance Program. With my friends at Loan Pronto, you can. Go to LoanPronto.com. Prosser here, and Loan Pronto has fixed rate APRs in the five. You can drop your rate now. Lower your payment with no income documentation and no appraisal. Do it at LoanPronto.com. Their all-digital platform makes it easy. They can even cover your closing costs. If you need cash now, Loan Pronto can get you up to 100% of your home value. You can pay off all your credit cards or other debt and save as much as $1,000 a month. Call Loan Pronto now at 904-999-1508 or get a 30-second rate quote at LoanPronto.com. Ask about streamlined VA loans, no income doc, and no appraisal. Loan Pronto, 999-1508 or LoanPronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. Looking for the perfect Saturday plans? Head over to Players Grill, where Saturdays are all about pizza and pints. Dive into a delicious pizza paired with your choice of Miller Lite or Yingling Draft Beer for just $12.99. Pizza, pints, and a great time. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. Instant keys. You don't have to go to the dealer. Instant Keys comes to you. For lost or broken keys or nearly any make and model of vehicle, call 722-1111 for Instant Keys Locksmith Service. Tone 10XL is presented by Vara and Vara, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the all-pro roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Boy, what a week it's been for the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot of unknowns, a lot of questions back on Monday. We have certainly gotten a lot of answers over the last four days. Let's talk about all of it with a former Jacksonville Jaguar, my buddy Cecil Shorts. He joins me every week during the football season, and he's going to be with us here periodically during the offseason on Hacker After Dark. Cecil, it's been a little while, man. How are you? I'm well, brother. Um, fighting through some sickness stuff, but doing well. Excited. Free agency is crazy in all aspects, so uh, excited to be on here with you, man. Yeah, man. It's been about a month since we last talked, since the Super Bowl, and since then a lot has transpired. The Jaguars, obviously a brand-new defensive coordinator. They released some veterans from Rayshon Jenkins to Darius Williams to Foley Fadakasi. And Cecil, they brought in a lot of guys as well, and we're going to touch upon all of it. First and foremost, though, your reaction earlier this week to Calvin Ridley leaving to go to the Tennessee Titans on a $50 million guaranteed contract. <laughs> you know, I'm happy for him um, to be out of football for – a uh, good amount of time, um, go through what he went through, and then to get that much money guaranteed, um, I'm happy for him. Now, from a Jaguar standpoint, I think we talked about it. I would love to have him back at a certain price, and that wasn't the price. <laughs> that was, I think that was way out of uh, out of the Jaguars zone. Um, but it's good for him. It's good for him. Now, you did go out and get Gabe Davis, and uh, you still have a, a plethora of receivers uh, still with Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and others. So we'll see. We'll see if they try to add anybody any more in the draft, but I'm um, very happy for Calvin. It's just I think that price, if that's what he was looking for, was way too high to stay in Jacksonville for what we saw. Um, very productive year, over a thousand yards, great year. Just to me, uh, there's inconsistencies, right? And when you give a guy 50 million that much money, you expect a little more consistency, a little more, uh, a little more dominance from your number one receiver. Was he good? Absolutely, but I think at that price. Um, I just don't think Jay would have been a good fit in Jacksonville. I don't fault him. I mean, it's a money grab to me because I'm not sure how competitive Tennessee is going to be in the next year or two, and Calvin's going to be 30 in December. But this was his one time for free agency, right? He had never been a free agent. Yep. He's probably not going to get another big payday like this again. Um, take us into the mindset of a player. You know, if, if a competitive team's offering you – 18 a year and a non-competitive team the average team is offering you 22 i mean the money's going to win out every time correct man I, that's hard that's hard because it depends on that particular guy now it's hard to pass up that much money it, it really is but you're going to a situation which to me you don't have a solidified quarterback in tennessee um you probably dealing with the younger guy um he has potential but he's not solidified yet or do you stay here in Jacksonville or go to another organization um, 
that has a solidified quarterback is in the playoff hunt, could potentially be in the Super Bowl, can be in that running, um, and you can make a legacy here. Like you could really, I think I thought he could have been a a big time, um, and I think you mentioned this. He could have been a I want I don't want to say a legend, but he could have been a huge part, a huge person in the community because he decided to stay. A beloved figure is how I put you it. You see, what I'm saying yeah. like he could he could he could have been huge if he decided to stay. And in my opinion, the higher you get, 18 million a year, 22 million a year, that's a lot of money, regardless. <laughs> now I've never been in that situation. But for me, I, I kind of, if, if I'm thinking about, I think I would go towards, hey, I'm gonna actually win, get a chance to play for a Super Bowl and play with a good quarterback. Um, but it's tough, man. And like you said, he's been out for a while, and he's 30. He's not gonna see this much money ever again from football, most likely because of his age, right? So I can't fault him. I'm not mad at him, um, but I do think at that price is just too high for Jacksonville. Former Jacksonville Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Shorts here with us on 1010XL. Cecil, you mentioned Gabe Davis. He's not even 25 years old yet. He turns 25 next month. He's already got 27 career touchdown receptions. The guy's a playmaker. 16 yards per reception is what he averaged last year. Now his highest year ever is 48 catches, and that's certainly got some eyebrows raised here. Keep in mind Stephon Diggs was clearly the number one target in Buffalo but what do you make of such a young guy with that many touchdowns coming to Jacksonville? Big, big time talent, big time potential, man. Um, a lot of his targets and catches were taken away because of Stefan Diggs. Um, in the beginning, he came in, he wasn't the guy. He kind of had to work his way up a little bit. Um, but in the last two years, he's been exceptional as far as getting touchdowns, making big plays down the field over and over and over again. You can look at playoff games where he's making big plays. You can look at um, regular, big regular season games. He's making big plays and big moments. He's showing up. And I think that's one thing I love to see about him, whether it's the Kansas City Chiefs, whether it's the playoffs, whether whatever the case may be, Gabe Davis is making plays down the field. He is a big guy. He can run. He can get some separation. Um, and to add that to, to Trevor Lawrence and Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram, um, it's, it's going to be exciting to see. So he has tons of talent, man. And like you said, I don't think he's 20 or just under 25 or 25 years old. He is somebody that he could be special um, here in Jacksonville. He was born 20 minutes up the road in Fernandina Beach. His mother went to Fernandina Beach High School, I believe, or somewhere out there. He said her first game ever was a Jaguar game. He went to UCF to college. I mean, at the press conference, Cecil, earlier this week, he said, thank God Jacksonville called because he really wanted to come home to Florida where his family is. How much does that matter for a player? Because it seemed like Gabe Davis was pretty excited about that. It's big time, man. It's big time. I think one of some of the hardest moments um, that you deal with in your career in the NFL, you need your family around you, like through the ups and the downs. And to go back home or go somewhere close to home and be close to, to that love, close to that care, um, close to people around you that knew you since you were a baby, that can uh, see you for who you are is huge. It's comfort, right? And it can uh, it can bring the best out of a player. So I think that's huge. They can be back home closer to his, his family um, and be able to play in front of him. Former Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Short. Cecil, the Jaguars made more signings, two guys – that aren't going to probably sell a lot of season tickets. It's not glamorous, but if you remember Trent Baalke in his press conference at the end of the year, he said we need to get tougher. We need to get more physical. So let's begin mm -hmm. on the offensive side. Mitch Morris, a center from Buffalo, was a team captain up there. He's 32. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not a long-term answer, but the guy played with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. He played with Josh Allen in Buffalo. He was a team captain for the Buffalo Bills. Boy, I, on the surface, Cecil, that appears to be a huge upgrade at center for the Jaguars. Hard-nosed guy, man. And, and when you play for those quarterbacks, when you play for those organizations, um, that's a huge – you trust that particular guy. He's running the show as far as the offensive line. So the offensive line feeds off of him. He's communicating well. Um, he's communicating at a high level. He's been in the big time playoff games. He knows what it takes to win. And when you're a captain for the Kansas City Chiefs, when you're a captain for the Buffalo Bills, that's a huge accomplishment. So even though he's 32, um, like you said, not a long-term answer, but he's going to be solid in the middle, man. Physical presence. He's going to make sure the offensive line is running at a high level for sure. It looks like the offensive line, the way it stands right now, Cam Robinson, Ezra Cleveland, Mitch Morse, Brandon Sheriff, Anton Harrison. Are you okay with that, if that's the starting lineup opening day? 
I'm I'm not mad at that at all. I'm not, I think Mitch is going to make a huge impact. Um, I still think we need to run the ball more. So, <laughs> so to add Mitch, who's a physical presence, who understands how to get the tough yards, who understands what's needed, I think it's going to be huge. I wouldn't mind a piece or two in. Um, I'm not afraid to see still going, but a piece or two either free agency or maybe another swing tackle in in uh, in the draft, um, or maybe a younger guy. But um, but this those five you just mentioned, I'll be I'll be okay with that. So yesterday, Cecil, the Jaguars missed out on Calvin Ridley on Wednesday. Yesterday, they spent some of that money on Eric Armstead, a big time Ooh. defensive tackle from San Francisco, 30 years old. Again, I mean, a lot of guys bulky signed are going into their second or third contracts. It looks like this is a win-now scenario in Jacksonville. Your reaction to Eric Armstead on his way to Duval County? Another captain. And, and I'll be honest with you, what Balky is doing, even though they may be older guys on their second or third contracts, he's bringing in winners. He's bringing in leaders. We just talked about Norris being a captain. We just talked about, we were talking about Eric Armstead, who was a captain, who was somebody that ingrained in his community. He he reminds me of a Calais Campbell type of player where he has a huge impact in the community. He was a leader on the team. People listen to him, um, and then he produces on the field. So he is a guy that's going to be stout, again, physical. That D-line in San Francisco, that was what's carrying them the last three, four, five years to the NFC Championship, to the Super Bowls. It's been that D-line, and he's been a catalyst in, the, in, that, in, that, front, in that front four. Um, so he's going to make a huge impact, man. I'm excited to see him get going. But what they're doing is they're bringing in vets. They're bringing in former first-rounders. They're bringing in former pro bowlers. They're bringing in former all-pros. They're bringing in team captains to come in and get this thing going because they know how to win. They're bringing in winners, and I love that. With, I love what Trent's doing so far. Eric Armstead, what could he do, his presence in the middle, for Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker? Again, we just talked about with with Norris, but physical. Somebody's going to be able to stop the run. Somebody's going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. He's six, what, six, 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 seven huge presence, long arms. He's going to be a dominant force in that middle. And then let alone, so you got some presence in the middle, getting pressure on the quarterback, be able to stop the run, and you team that up with Josh Allen. Come on, man. <laughs> that is that's going to be scary for the opposing offenses to go against that, especially in, within the conference, within the division, excuse me, uh, twice a year. A couple of more for former Jaguar wide receiver Cecil Shorts. Cecil, uh, Rayshon Jenkins and Darius Williams out in the secondary. Darnell Savage, Ronald Darby in. On the surface, maybe a little younger, maybe a little better at safety with Savage. To me, Williams and Darby, I don't really know. What I've been told is Darby fits what new defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen wants to do a lot more than Darius Williams did. Yeah, and I think Darby's come off one of his best years in his career. Um, I think he's been on a few teams beforehand, um, and then last year he kind of really caught on and 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 and, and played really well. Um, then you look at Savage. I mean, he's a former first round guy, if I'm not mistaken. He's a guy that's made plays in Green Bay that understands um, again how to win, understands what needs to be done. He's probably a better safety um, than what you had previously. Um, but those two guys, I man, just adding depth. And you're adding two guys that are confident back there that can fit the system. So I'm excited about it, man. Darby, again, if he can continue uh, the run he had last year into this year, that confidence for a DB is so important. Like if a, a, a defensive back is all mental. It's a huge mental game. So for him to can be, continue to build on that from last year, um, it's going to be huge. Kind of a changing of the guard. Jamal Agnew out. Devin Duvernay from Baltimore in. I didn't know a ton about him. I knew he was a former pro bowler. But the more people you talk to, Cecil, very good in the return game, obviously being an all-pro and a pro bowler. But he might add a little more at wide receiver than Agnew did. Keep in mind, Agnew was a former DB that right. turned into a wide receiver, and he was decent at times. Duvernay in 2022 for a couple of weeks was literally wide receiver one in Baltimore when they had some injuries. So you might get a little more wide receiver from Duvernay than what people are expecting. I think when needed, he can be that guy. He's not a he's not a two or a three in my opinion. He's more of a four, five type of guy, but he can make plays when the ball comes to him. He's a true receiver, unlike Agnew, who I think was a heck of an athlete um, and a darn good darn good returner. But he's more of Devonair Devonair, excuse me, is more of a, a, a true receiver type. So he understands the concepts more. He can run better routes. Um, and then I think where he's special, as you mentioned, is the return game. You put that ball in his hands. 
Um, he can make some plays back deep. So uh, you'll definitely be – he's definitely a depth a depth uh, pickup for receiver. Um, this case somebody gets hurt or he can make his plays. He'll have his jet sweeps. He'll have his, his certain plays in there every week. Um, but he is some somebody that can really, really help you in the return game. I know, I know Agnew did, but when you have an all-pro that can also be a, a decent receiver for you, it's, it's, it's high praises for him. Cecil, as we begin to wrap up, you need a good backup quarterback in the National Football League. We saw that last year with Trevor's injury issues. Nothing against C.J. Beathard, but Mac Jones, to me, is just simply a better player. And I know the Jaguars gave up a sixth-round pick, and in a perfect world, Mac Jones won't take a snap in 2024 and unless it's a blowout win for the Jaguars. But in the event that Trevor goes down, the fact that you got a former first-round pick with 46 career touchdowns, to me, you could do a lot worse for a backup quarterback than having Mac Jones. I'm, I'm not mad at that at all. I think it was just weird, the timing of it. Um, I think kind of threw a lot of people off. I think um, that was one of the first moves the Jags made, so it kind of threw a lot of people off, like, hey, what's going on? But if you look at the landscape and look at kind of the injury history of what Trevor's been dealing with, and when you can have a guy like Mac who have no pressure on him at all, um, actually came from a bad situation, in my opinion. I think he was uh, dealing with a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator at one point. <laughs> he just It was just a mess in New England. Um, so for him to have a fresh start, I believe he's from Jacksonville. And he can truly be a solid backup. He was once a pro bowler. I don't care if it was three years ago. But he was once a pro bowler. Uh, somebody else that Trent brought in that understands, hey, he has some type of pedigree behind him, right? Um, he can come in if Trevor gets hurt, which, God forbid, anything happens to, to 16. Um, he can come in and be solid. He can come in and be a viable backup. He can come in and possibly and possibly uh, do some really, really good things. And I think, too, like you look at his, I think he's an asset because – at some point, uh, whether he doesn't play a game at all and there's high praises coming from the organization, oh, Mac Jones has been a professional, he's been awesome, he's been, uh, you know, just a hard and working, really helping, really helping Trevor along, that could be a trade asset for the future for you. Get the, maybe you can get that six-round pick back or for a higher pick, right? Um, so you never know what, what, what can come from that. But I think that's a solid, solid, smart pickup, um, and you're investing in your future. Cecil, as we say goodbye, the Jaguars weren't the only team in the division to improve. Obviously, Houston, another former team of yours, Joe Mixon and Daniil Hunter. Now, Joe Mixon's not 25, right? He's about to be 28, yeah. but I still think he's got two or three good years left. Daniil Hunter, kind of the same thing. He's going to be 30 this year, but still very good, very productive. So the Texans are throwing haymakers. The Jaguars are throwing haymakers. I think Tennessee – is trying to get involved. And Indianapolis, although they didn't bring in a lot of out-of-house uh, free agents, they kept their own, and their own was good enough to almost get in the playoffs last year. So, man, this division very quickly has become very compelling. It has. It has. Um, I think Houston and Jacksonville have probably made the biggest splashes. Um, but when you're, you're sitting in Indianapolis and you can sign guys that you know, when you sign guys that kind of earn their contract and – um, are ready to take that next step. And when you draft a quarterback, I think he was top five last year, Anthony Richardson, and wasn't playing that bad. Um, you know, and then you bring in a Joe Flacco to help bring him along and to help to help teach him. And just in case things don't work out, you can put Flacco in there who had a great year last year. I think you're in the hunt. So I think these – I think three out of the four teams are serious uh, – uh, I wouldn't say serious. I think three out of four teams have a chance to really make some noise in the division, make it really, really tough – uh, I'm just not sold on Jacksonville. I don't know who the heck the quarterback going to be. I'm not, not sorry, not Jacksonville, Tennessee. Uh, even though you got Calvin Ridley and, 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 and DeAndre Hopkins, now you when you got Tony Pollard, but um, who is your quarterback? I'm, I'm just not sold. You can give them all, all the, all the uh, pieces you want to, but Tony Pollard is not necessarily a bell cow like Derrick Henry was. Um, and he's not necessarily – uh, somebody I think is a, going to be a every down back consistent thousand yard rusher year after year like Derrick Henry was. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. But this division's definitely gotten tougher on paper. Now they got to go out there and play. <laughs> they got to go out there and stay healthy. But on paper, it's going to be it's going to be a dog fight to see who's going to win the AFC South this year. Former wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Cecil Shorts, is always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL. Cecil, we'll do it again maybe a week or two before the draft. We'll see where the Jaguars are at that point. Really appreciate you, my friend. Hey, anytime, RG. You take care, brother. 
Always enjoy having my buddy Cecil Shorts here on Hacker After Dark. And it's interesting, you know, like we talked about as the show started, AFC South going to be some compelling stuff with Houston, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, Tennessee. Every team has a quarterback 24 years old or younger. Every team has a head coach three years or less. Doug Peterson, now the elder statesman of head coaches in the AFC South, to me, it has gone from one of the most boring, worst divisions in the NFL to arguably one of the most compelling heading into the 2024 season. The Jaguars were very active this week, very active. Devin Duvernay from Baltimore, Ronald Darby from Baltimore, a couple of former Ravens in 2023 are both heading to Jacksonville in 2024. Our guy up in Baltimore is Luke Jones, WNST Radio covering the Baltimore Ravens. Let's talk about DuVernay. Let's talk about Darby. And let's talk about Derrick Henry, the former Yuli product, one of our favorites, now no longer in the division as Derrick Henry is now a Baltimore Raven. There's a lot to discuss. Luke Jones, WNST Radio in Baltimore is next. Hacker After Dark on a Friday night in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're glad you're with us here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. The world will be watching Ponte Vedra. And the Scheffler victory train just keeps on rolling. Catch live Southeast Orthopedic Specialist leaderboard updates from the players. Brought to you by Performance Painting, Kanaya Water, Jacksonville, and First Coast Honda Dealers. On 1010XL. It's the 60th Bob Hayes Invitational Track Meet, March 14 through 16. Track events will be held at Hodges Stadium on the campus of UNF. Thursday, March 14, the annual Hall of Fame Gala at the Potter's House International. Friday, March 15, the first collegiate meet at 10 a.m. and the Coach Day Middle School track meet 5 p.m. On Saturday, March 16, the annual Bob Hayes Invitational Track and Field meet at 8.30 a.m. at Hodges Stadium. For information and tickets, visit bhitm22.org, presented by the City of Jacksonville and Pepsi. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation, light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. This is your Mad Dad's update with Chapter President Donald Ford. Mad Dad's is asking for good, committed men who want to be part of an organization that has been around for 17 years. We are a group that is part of the solution, not the problem. We are a group that don't stand around murmuring and complaining, but get into action and hit the streets to get the community to break the code of silence to remove the murderers off our street. We do not require a lot of time, just willing and able bodies to get involved. We've had far too many murders this year already not to get involved. If you want to be part of this great organization, call 904-718-1649. We're looking for men, not men acting like boys. Hit me on Facebook and tell me what you think. For information about Mad Dad, go to Mad Dad Jacksonville Chapter Facebook or MadDadJacksonville.com. Hey, Jacksonville, I'm sure by now you've seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We are an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We are committed to customer service, reliability, and have unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today. GFL, green for life. Follow the offseason with Tire Outlet and 1010XL. Find out more about Duval's newest names. He's a pro. Listen for free agency profiles. Brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Experience the universal difference. Is your roof showing signs of wear and tear? Call Universal Roof and Contracting today to schedule your complimentary roof inspection. 
Right now, get $200 off your roof replacement plus flexible financing. And as a bonus, receive free window mitigation with a full roof replacement. This offer expires March 31st and restrictions apply. Universal Roof and Contracting, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. License number CCC057165, CBC125844. Universal Roof. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. At the First Coast YMCA, you'll find much more than just a gym. We offer many ways to help you be active, reach weight loss goals, and find your inner strength while you connect with your community. Family memberships at the Y include unlimited group exercise classes, child care while you work out, and youth sports participation. It's easy to join the Y and affordable for all. Plus, the Y is a great place to meet a new circle of friends. Visit the Y near you or online at fcymca.org. Hi, this is Dave Barker. Want to grow your hair back? IHRS, right here in Jacksonville, is the only hair transplant clinic in the Southeast to offer multi-unit hair grafting and the 45-minute PRP treatments. Grow your hair back. Call now for a free in-person evaluation. 904-777-IHRS. 904-777-4477. Or visit hairforme.com. Nick and here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the all-pro roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL on 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Boy, the Jaguars have been one of the most active teams so far in free agency. Again, all these deals become official on Wednesday, but they were very active on Monday, agreeing to terms with, what, half a dozen guys, including two from the Baltimore Ravens. And when it comes to Baltimore, our guy up there is Luke Jones, WNST Radio in Baltimore. He's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL. Luke, how we doing? Doing well. How are you, my friend? Luke, we're good. Thank you for the time, as always. And all right. Two former Ravens, now about to be Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's take them one at a time. Devin Duvernay, we know he's an all-pro, a former pro bowler, a special teams guy. He is on his way to Jacksonville, Luke. Tell the Jaguar fans about Duvernay and the type of player he is. Well, I, I think expectations are what are key here. I think if you're looking for someone that's going to be a good special teams player, he's been a gunner on the punt team. He's a two-time Pro Bowl return specialist, uh, and he can return kicks and punts. Uh, if that's what you're looking to, to get in terms of maximizing the value of the contract, then I think assuming he stays healthy, and he, it is fair to point out he's had a couple of injuries the last couple of years, then I think you'll be happy with him. I think where the trouble lies is if you're expecting a whole lot of him as, as an offensive player. Uh, and let me be clear, going back a couple years ago, uh, Devin Duvernay flashed some promise, and even go back to early 2022, so we're not talking that long ago. Uh, he was off to a pretty nice start that season, was their number two wide receiver, uh, had caught a few touchdowns, and uh, when Rashad Bateman went down at that point in time, he kind of became their default number one wide receiver. Uh, but unfortunately, that's kind of where he faded out a little bit. Uh, he, he had a foot injury late in 2022, but even before then, his explosiveness, for whatever reason, and the Ravens have denied that he had like some kind of chronic issue, anything like that, but just didn't look quite as explosive when he was playing on offense. And then last year, Todd Munkin, new offensive coordinator, comes in. Duvernay, and, and let me also point out, 
the Ravens added Odell Beckham Jr., they added Zay Flowers, they added Nelson Aguilar. So they made quite a few investments at wide receiver, but DuVernay was a complete non-factor on offense last year. So he's a really good speed guy in terms of straight line speed, which works well uh, in the return game. Change of direction and lateral quickness, maybe not quite uh, as impressive there. But uh, like I said, Ryan, if you're talking about someone uh, that's going to contribute on special teams, like I said, he can play all phases, You know, he's, uh, including being a good gunner on the punt team. Uh, I think Jacksonville will be happy with him. Uh, if you're counting on him to contribute offensively, yeah, that's where I have a, a little more question. But uh, as I said, he has contributed some uh, in past seasons. Just didn't happen for him uh, as a wide receiver in 2023. Luke Jones, WNST Radio in Baltimore. He almost sounds like a card and copy, Luke, of a guy we had here in Jamal Agnew. Now, Agnew was a DB in Detroit that turned into a wide receiver, but he was made his uh, money in the NFL on special teams, and that appears to be exactly what you said about Duvernay. Could he play wide receiver in a pinch with injuries? Yeah, perhaps, but clearly kickoff return, punt return, the special team side of things is where the Jaguars are going to see that return on investment. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's where you're looking. And, and, I mean, I know what the, the initial report was the deal was about two years, $8 million as far as the base, and then has some incentives, I, if, if I remember correctly. You know, that's for, for me, and, and I'm, I'm looking at it through the perspective of the Ravens having a pretty tight cap situation themselves. You know, value-wise, I don't love that contract, but – uh, again, if you're looking for him to be a depth guy at wide receivers, your number four, number five wide receiver, that's totally fine. And that's not to say you can't make any plays at all. But, uh, again, his value really lies in what he can bring on special teams. And uh, when healthy, he's been a very productive special teams player. Yeah, a former All-Pro, a former Pro Bowler coming to Jacksonville as a special teams returner. And we thought that was it from the Baltimore to Jacksonville connection. And then late in the evening on Monday – Ronald Darby, the cornerback. Now, he spent a very short amount of time in Baltimore, but, Luke, what I found interesting was in seeing some of the responses on social media, some of his teammates and a lot of the Ravens fan base not happy that Darby is leaving Baltimore. Yeah, he was a sneaky, good signing for them. Uh, Keep in mind, I mean, this is a guy who was coming off of an ACL injury the previous year uh, in Denver. I think he had that injury in October. Uh, if I recall correctly, October of 2022, gets signed by the Ravens in late August. They had a slew of injuries at the cornerback position during the preseason. So uh, they were kind of in a spot where, hey, this guy's played well uh, in the past. Yeah, he's, he has a long injury history, and that kind of tamps down his price, as I think it did uh, even with Jacksonville signing him. But uh, he played well for the Ravens. And, you know, I, I can even remember you and I talking during the season. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, the Ravens' uh, three-time Pro Bowl cornerback, had an injury-plagued season, missed roughly half the season w- with various injuries. Uh, and Darby was the one who stepped in for him, made uh, a total of nine starts, counting uh, their two postseason games. And he played at a really solid level. Now, again, as I mentioned, long injury history. I think last year he played 16 games in the regular season. It was only the second time in the last seven years, I want to say it is, that he's played more than 11 games in a season. So I think if you're eyeing him to be a starting player, and I think the ability certainly warrants that, I think he is someone that you probably want to have a a solid, you know, one, one, a kind of backup option uh, to kind of go with him because, you know, history says he's probably not going to play 17 games. But uh, I I think that was a really nice signing for the Jaguars. Uh, You know, what they moved on from Darius Williams, who, uh, of course, is a starter making a lot of money. I think just from a pure playing standpoint uh, and ability standpoint, I think Ronald Darby is is still someone who can be a rock solid starter in this league. But like I said, the injury part of it is, uh, you know, that that's part of the equation with him. Uh, They're not giving him a ton of money. And of those two signings, I absolutely like the Ronald Darby signing more than the Duvernay signing. I I, I think he can really be a nice contributor uh, as an outside corner in a league that, you know, uh, you you still need that. You know, you certainly need uh, uh, guys that can, can, uh, match up on the outside, and he did a really nice job for the Ravens uh, in a season where they had some need there. How, do, how would you describe his game, Luke? Physical? Is he good against the run? What, what's your thought there on Darby? You know, he's not a big guy. I mean, I think he's listed like 5'11", 190 pounds, but I was surprised with how well he tackled for a guy his size. So, I, you know, I wouldn't say that he's physical in the way that, you know, someone like Marlon Humphrey, for example, who uh, can play outside or move inside of the nickel and almost be like a, a 
small linebacker. You know, he's not that physical, but certainly doesn't shy away. Uh, and, and I thought he did a nice job for them, uh, you know, playing zone coverage, but also being able to match up in man. So, you know, again, I, I think at this point in his career, he certainly profiles better as a, a number two starting corner uh, to go with, you know, a, a guy that you're hoping is your best corner. And like I said, I think it's important to have, you know, a depth guy that you're going to be comfortable with understanding, you know, he's had knee injuries. He's had various injuries over the course of his career. But uh, again, he stayed healthy for the Ravens last year uh, and played a, a good bit, including down the stretch. And uh, he played at a high level for them. Uh, and to your point, yeah, uh, of all the players that they lost on day one of free agency, one, I don't want to say he was the best player of that group, but I think relative to what expectations were with you know someone like Geno Stone, uh, the, their number three safety who wound up in Cincinnati. Everyone knew Geno was going to walk. You know, he's going to get more money, wanted a, uh, a starting job. Uh, of all those guys they lost in that first wave, I, I think there was some hope at least that the Ravens were going to keep Darby. So, I, again, health and the injury history, I mean, that's part of it, but that's also why you know, you're paying him what he is rather than $10 million or something like that uh, on an average annual value basis. Final moments, Luke Jones, WNST Radio in Baltimore. Again, Devin Duvernay and Ronald Darby arriving to Jacksonville, former Ravens. A guy from Jacksonville, from Uly, that is now going to Baltimore is Derek Henry. It's been long rumored that the Baltimore Ravens were interested. I mean, dating back a couple of years, certainly the trade deadline last year, but they finally get Derek Henry. Uh, we love it because he's out of the AFC South because he absolutely tormented the Jacksonville Jaguars during his time in Nashville. But, Luke, I know it's early. It happened very recently, obviously. But what's the reaction about the King coming to Baltimore there to be in the backfield with Lamar Jackson? I mean, I think there's overwhelming excitement. To your point, Ryan, I mean, he was someone that they absolutely had a dialogue with with Tennessee at the trade deadline last year. I mean, I, I think you love the player. I mean, don't get me wrong about that, but, you know, two years, $16 million, $9 million fully guaranteed, and he's going to be 30 years old, and he's already defied logic and for a couple, what, two, three years now in terms of how we view running backs in this day and age and workload and thing of that, things of that nature. So the Ravens do have a lot of needs. You know, I'll throw that out there. The price, uh, especially considering how many running backs have come off the market, I think – you, know, you could probably debate that one a little bit, but uh, I mean, Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in the same backfield uh, and, and looking at a Ravens offense that even last year with all the injuries they had at running back, first in yards, third in yards per carry, first in rushing DVOA, and I think third in rushing EPA. So this is a team that regardless of who they've had at running back, they've been able to run the ball because Lamar Jackson, that, that, that factor. So I think it's scary to think about the possibilities of Derrick Henry. Just a matter of, hey, how much longer is this guy going to continue to fight off father time? But, hey, he, he's done it this long. What's another year or two? Luke, final question. You and I talked six weeks ago prior to the AFC championship game. At that point, Baltimore was right in the thick of it. They were the, having a first home AFC title game since they arrived in Baltimore as, as the Ravens. And obviously they went on to lose. And I'm just curious, you know, the fact that they didn't have to go through Burrow, who was injured, or Herbert, or Lawrence missed the playoffs. And, I mean, it was right there in front of them. They lose that game. They're going to lose some people in free agency, certainly. As, has the city, as the team, kind of gotten over that and they're ready to move forward or there's still a lot of you know feelings about that AFC title loss I mean I think that's the kind of loss it's going to take a while frankly Ryan I, I think it's going to take this team breaking through in January for, for the, the fan base and for the team to truly get over it I mean it, it helps when you bring in someone like Derrick Henry uh, the, the, you know you're feeling good about that but I, I think there was very much a sense of it being a missed opportunity because of what you just laid out. And, oh, yeah, I guess at least the perception that Kansas City was down last year, which shows you how we all uh, were, were correct about that in the end. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's tough. I think there's a sense of what exactly is it going to take for this team to get over the hump. You know, maybe it is Derrick Henry. It's not, not necessarily would have been first on my list of things that they maybe need roster-wise, but hey, they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the heck out of the football. <laughs> and if Derrick Henry's even close to being what he was even last year, uh, that's going to be extremely difficult to stop. But to say if Baltimore's gotten over it yet, no. I, I think uh, that's going to be something that uh, they're not going to get over until the Ravens are back uh, in playing in January, you hope next year, and uh, finally breaking through. 
Luke Jones is our guy when it comes to the Ravens. He's with WNST Radio in Baltimore, and he's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL. Luke, really appreciate it. If developments warrant, we'll get you back on. But if not, we'll talk to you about division uh, preview time here during the summer. Thank you, my friend. Sounds good. Enjoy Devin DuVernay and Ronald Darby. He knows where the bodies are buried. We've been approached already by the DOD, the FBI, the CIA. We're a separate I... division. Bleacher Report College Football Insider, Matt Hayes. I don't want to talk about it. Noon to three weekdays on 1010XL. Here's Linda Beaver. Did you hear what's happening? Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet are screen cleaning. New inventory on the ground means we need to make more room. Take advantage of huge savings on thousands of vehicles priced to sell. New and pre-owned prices have been reduced and all sales associates have been instructed to give maximum value on all trades. But you better hurry, the best deals go first. Head to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville to take advantage of our spring cleaning sale. We're here to wow you. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jointon Creek Road. Are you tired of living with constant pain from torn ligaments or nagging tendinitis and bothersome joint pain? Say goodbye to endless medications and invasive surgeries. Go Biotarget Regenerative Treatment is available only at injury care centers. Their innovative approach helps you recover faster and get back to doing what you love without drugs or surgery. Don't just treat the symptoms, target the root cause with Biotarget. Visit GoBioTarget.com to learn more and schedule your appointment today. Hey folks, Mike Dempsey here. You've heard me talking about Pella windows and doors. And with great ratings and expert reviews, you know they're high quality and energy efficient products. So what's your next step? How about scheduling a free consultation or just stop by the Pella showroom right there on Phillips Highway next to Tesla. Pella's professional consultants will guide you through your entire project from start to finish. From simple projects to complex renovations, their team has the experience needed to make your project a success. And that's the quality and service you can expect from Pella Windows and Doors. Hey, it's Matt Hayes. I had another aha moment last week when walking through the grocery store. I stood in the aisle and laughed out loud while looking at what I used to buy. And that's an overlooked but critical benefit of Awaken 180 weight loss. It changes the way you look at food. You embrace the good and avoid the bad. Because both your mind and body are reshaped using the program Mike Dempsey and I have had so much success with. I lost 40 pounds with Awaken 180 weight loss. And it begins and ends with a program that encourages you to eat. That's right. Eat. Six times a day. Awaken 180 weight loss also gives you a personal coach who helps you through the process and has answers to every possible question because they've succeeded with the program too. They make sure you stay the course and reach your weight loss goals and, here's the key, keep it off for life. Get your initial consultation on the calendar this month and get ready to change your life with a proven plan that more than 20,000 have successfully used. It's fast, it's easy, and it's free support for life. Reserve online at awaken180weightloss.com. Doc Doc Rooter is a full service plumbing company that's locally owned and operated, fully licensed and insured. We'll be at your home in a timely manner, provide honest pricing, and ensure the job is completed correctly or we'll make it right. Doc Doc Rooter can handle all plumbing jobs, including repairing broken pipes, clearing clogged drains, to installing new fixtures, water heaters, garbage disposals, and full repipes for older homes. If you're stuck, Call the Duck, 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Transmission troubles? I'm Robin Sidbury, owner of Action Transmission Specialist on Merrill Road. So come in and see how we can help solve your transmission troubles. We service all makes and models. Remember, get traction. Call Action at 744-0755. Race into gate for big offers. By big, we mean great deals on Red Bull and a chance to win tickets to the big race coming to Miami May 3rd through 5th. Buy two 8.4-ounce cans of Red Bull, get one free. And if you're a MyGate Rewards member, you are automatically entered for a chance to win race tickets. Not a member? Download the Gate app and sign up today. See store for details. Go from good to gate. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Tired of changing out bad sod year after year? 
Get it done right with Round Tree Sod. Big or small, they have it, and always supplied farm fresh. For a lush, legendary green lawn, call 7414 Sod for a free estimate. 7414 Sod. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. Yes, it is. We'll take you up to 10 o'clock tonight. 1010XL, 92.5 FM. Jamal St. Cyr, my buddy from Channel 4, stopping by to talk Jags off season and more. That comes up. In less than 15 minutes, we'll also go up to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Andy Herman, Pack-A-Day podcast and Packer report to talk a little Darnell Savage as well. That comes up towards the bottom of the 9 o'clock hour. So I've lost like 30-plus pounds on Awaken 180. I've only been doing it for three and a half weeks. So my body's changing a lot. It's great. I absolutely love it. Um... But my back is very sore today. And the reason my back is very sore today, I don't know who my wife thought she married happily now for almost nine years. It'll be nine years in May. Love you, sweetie. But she must have apparently mistaken me for Bob Vila because she is starting to work from her from our house on Monday and she ordered all this stuff to go into our room right? A cabinet and a desk and all the stuff she can do her work, which is great. I'm the kind of guy that if you buy that sort of stuff, you either A, buy it already assembled or B, you pay somebody to come assemble it. I'm never going to be handed a bunch of plywood and be able to build you a coffee table. That's just not reality. That's not who I am. I don't have a lot of hidden skills in that regard. And at the age of 40, which I am now, 40 years old, I've succumbed to the realization that's just simply who I'm never going to be. I'm fairly strong, so I have no problem, Denmark, carrying all this heavy stuff up and down the stairs. I can get it from the garage to the room. But as far as actually drilling this hole there and putting that screw there and the screwdrivers and the hammer and setting everything up and getting the holes in the right place that's just not my thing you gotta what you gotta do is go on youtube and look up whatever the exact wording is on the manual yeah, and well, then you watch somebody do it so then you can do exactly how they do it see, that's now, the easiest way to do it my father-in-law's in town and he's helping and he is that kind of guy he's helping a lot but this was like 10 boxes of stuff start calling you bob the builder right we're not talking about one or two boxes this was a bunch of stuff that we have to put together and um again at the age of 40 you just throw in the white towel with certain aspects of life and one of the aspects of life at the age of 40 that i just know is a reality is i'm just not any good at that sort of stuff and my father-in-law today is like hey man uh look at this and look at this diagram and tell me what side number 14 goes into and the base on number six and we need this nail and this type of screwdriver. I can and I'm, see you looking so confused. Dude, I'm looking at my father-in-law like he has three heads. He might as well have been speaking a foreign language to me. Now, if you want to break down the 3-4 defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the early 90s, or if you want to talk about the 94 Florida Gator Final Four team, I'm all there. If you want to break down the Jaguar opening day roster, September 3rd, 1995, I'm your man. But do not ask me about number 14 on diagram 5 to put into this hole on number 7 on diagram 6, and they have to level up evenly with a ruler and a tape measure and a hammer. Good luck to you. That's just simply not going to happen. But that's going to be my life for a majority of this weekend. So uh, that's where I'm at. 
again, I, I don't know why she thought I miraculously turned into Bob the Builder or Bob Vila, but good heavens. Any of you that do that, I tip my cap to you, brother, because that is not my thing. There is absolutely no question about it. Luckily, I happen to know a little bit about sports, which is how I make my living. And luckily, that brings us to the 9 o'clock hour. Jamal St. Sarah of Channel 4 coming up in less than 10 minutes. Again, we'll go to Green Bay at the bottom of the hour. Andy Herman from the Pack-A-Day podcast and Packer Report talking about new Jaguar safety, Darnell Savage. Friday night, Jacksonville, Florida with Dylan Denmark. The Hacker Ryan Green with you. It's 1010XL and it's 92.5 FM. It's so much more than great golf. It's my favorite week of the year. Track your favorite golfers and get live Southeast Orthopedic Specialist leaderboard updates from the players. Brought to you by Monahan Jewelers, Coastal Equipment, and Roundtree Side. Hacker here, and after my announcement of starting Awaken 180 Weight Loss, everybody's been asking me. So I'm going to go ahead and update you. After just two weeks, I'm down 25 pounds. That's 25 pounds in two weeks. And it's been simple. I'm not starving myself. I'm meeting with my coach every week, getting guidance, getting things to try, things to do and not do. You listen to what they say. You do the Awaken 180 program, and the results come. 25 pounds down for yours truly in just two weeks. No pills, no injections. I'm doing it the right way with the solution for weight loss. Do what Dempsey, Matt Hayes, and myself have done and make the call to Awaken 180 Weight Loss. 844-346-1800. 844-346-1800 or awaken180weightloss.com. If I can lose 25 in two weeks, you can too. It's Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Hey, Hicken here. I couldn't be any happier than to join the George Moore Chevrolet family. When I say family, I mean it. Visit their beautiful showroom today off Atlantic Boulevard. Find out exactly what I'm talking about. No pressure, just friendly help. And whether you want a car, a truck, SUV, electric, pre-owned, you name it, George Moore Chevrolet has it. If you can't make it over to Atlantic Boulevard, no problem. MooreChevy.com is easy to navigate as any site you will try. It's never been more easy to use. George Moore Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Mueller Air Conditioning presents... Are you cool? Today's lucky contestant, a cheese negotiator from Jacksonville, Florida, meet Margaret Drent. How do you like my costume, Bob? I'm Gruyere. Well, you smell great, Margaret. But here's your question. What's wrong with your air conditioner when you hear this sound? Oh, um, that's a toughie. Are you sure you don't want me to tell you the suggested retail price of a box of rice a Five seconds, Margaret. Is it a compressor motor starter failure? That's right, Margaret. And if you call the coolness experts at Bueller Air Conditioning, we can fix that faulty AC to make sure that you are cool. Surprisingly stuffy inside a giant cheese. You sign the waiver, Margaret. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees. About $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to ETAJAX.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. Trivia enthusiasts, Tuesday night is your night. Gather your team and join us at Players Grill in Mandarin or Miramar for the ultimate trivia showdown. It's a whole lot of fun every Tuesday starting at 7 p.m. Are you ready to prove you're the trivia champions? Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. This date in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On March 15, 2015, in the 56th SEC Men's Basketball Tournament, Kentucky beats Arkansas 78-63. to Top-ranked Kentucky never trailed in the game. This NFL free agency profile is brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Experience the universal difference. Jacksonville's offensive line gets a boost from Buffalo center Mitch Morris. 
The nine-year veteran was drafted in the second round by Kansas City and started 139 games, including 13 playoff games. A Pro Bowler in Buffalo, Morse was nominated for the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award and brings seasoning and support to the front wall in Duval. Keeping your body healthy and active leads to a more vibrant life. A great place to do that is the First Coast YMCA. The Y is equipped with state-of-the-art cardio and strength equipment, plus group exercise studios where trainers host activities like yoga, Zumba, and cycling sessions. The full-court basketball gym and indoor five-lane swimming pool are open year-round. The Kid Zone can keep an eye on your kids while you work on that dad bod. And it's all available with your family membership. Learn more at fcymca.org. Hear the Florida Gators all season on 1010XL. Brought to you by Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Make your plans now to visit Ronnie's Repair Shop next Thursday and Friday for their annual spring sales event. Streamline your landscaping with the lowest sales prices of the year on their full line of steel handheld equipment, chainsaws, trimmers, edgers, and blowers. Whether you manage your own yard or a local yard care business, you don't want to miss out on this once a year steel sales event at Ronnie's Repair Shop on Sunbeam Road, March 21st and 22nd. You've heard about the thousands of patients finally getting relief from chronic joint pain thanks to QC Kinetics' non-invasive treatments. And here's one who was determined to avoid surgery. Meet Vicki. The orthopedic surgeon said, well, you're going to need knee replacement sooner rather than later. And I kept hearing commercials about QC Kinetics and thought, well, I'm going to check them out first. QC Kinetics has treated over 20,000 patients like Vicki around the country, people who were told they needed surgery but chose a more natural, less invasive approach that uses regenerative treatments to help help heal and restore painful joints with no downtime. If QC Kinetics had not been what I expected, I would have gone through with the surgery, but I got so much relief and am now pretty much pain-free that I don't have to have the surgery. Before going under the knife, you need to check out QC Kinetics. The consultation is free. Call today. QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. Ten Ten XL is presented by Farah and Farah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars, protecting you and your family. Call three nine six fifty five fifty five Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on Ten Ten XL and ninety two point five FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Well, the sun did come up today in Jaguar Land yesterday after Calvin Ridley announces he is on his way to the Tennessee Titans. A four-year, $92 million deal, $50 million of that is guaranteed. What do the Jaguars do now? How did we get here? And is it all Trent Baalke's fault? Let's talk about all of it with my buddy Jamal St. Cyr of Channel 4. He's always kind enough to join us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Jamal, you and I were uh, texting back and forth yesterday and I think when 4 o'clock and 4.30 came and went, uh, that was not a good sign. And ultimately, 5.30 came around, and the Tennessee Titans made a humongous splash. No, th- that was always the concern. Like, it, the, the the waiting game and the no news was good news with Calvin Ridley. You ca- everybody kind of felt like the momentum was going toward the Jaguars. But in the back of your head, you kind of had to say, well, this could be his agent doing agent things well he knew at four o'clock he could use the jaguars as more leverage to other teams to apply pressure and it seems like that's what he did and the titans responded with the big old contract yeah that's a big deal jaguar fans are mad let's start with the calvin ridley side of this i don't blame ridley at all it's a money grab i don't think tennessee is going to be competitive at least in 2024 we'll see moving forward they're, they got holes in their defense. They got issues on the offensive line. I'm intrigued, I guess, with Calvin Ridley and Tony Pollard and DeAndre Hopkins. We'll see about Will Levis. Uh, but to me, and, and again, Calvin had never been in free agency. This was his first time, probably his last big payday. He's going to be 30 in December. To me, it was about money more so than it was about winning, which, again, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. And a dude that's about to be 30, this is his first big payday in the NFL. 
yeah, this was a go get as every dollar, every cent you can get. This was not about, oh, can you win football? Uh, look, there's probably also a part of him that felt like the Jaguars weren't using him the correct way last season. And going to a team, I'd be willing to bet Holtz, who was the passing game coordinator with the Jags, is now the offensive coordinator for the Titans, probably said as much when they got a chance to finally talk to him and said, hey, you know, we'll use you the right way. You'll get the numbers and get this contract and all the money and blah, blah, blah. So, look, I, I, I get it. Dollars and cents are dollars and cents, and and you, they only players only have a, a short window to capitalize on it. And for a guy like Calvin Ridley, who had the suspension that delayed it, and he came into the NFL a little bit older, his second contract is is he's going to be 30 to start this season. So when that contract's up, he's going to be going into a 34 year season or year old season. The odds of him getting a third contract aren't exactly hugely high not at least a a third mega contract (laughs) yeah i agree this was his one opportunity for pay dirt and he hit it and he's off to tennessee now that brings us back here to trent balky and people are storming the gates again when it comes to trent balky um look i mean the bottom line is and it's hard to defend balky if you would have signed josh allen you could have franchised ridley and this would not have been an issue this to me appears to be a gigantic blunder on the part of general manager Trent Baalke. Look, that that was the misstep. That was the misstep. People have been pointing it out for months now. Look, going into the season, the expectation, at least that many of us had, was that the plan was to franchise tag Calvin Ridley this offseason. What did that mean for Josh Allen? Yeah, well, most people just kind of assume they'd get some sort of deal done with him. Well, lo and behold, Josh Allen goes and has the mega season he had. So getting a deal done with him becomes that much more difficult because now you look at what Brian Burns just got and you got to say, wow, Brian Burns had eight sacks. What do you think Josh Allen wants to get paid? Huh? So uh, that hundred million dollar contract we were all talking about is looking like pennies on the dollar, you know? So Josh Allen looking for a payday and he's earned said payday, but Trent Baalke, that's a tough deal to facilitate if you're trying to pinch pennies a little bit. And that's what created this monster. He couldn't get that deal done. That was a misstep. He should have tried to get it done harder last off season. I get it, whatever. So now you're here and you couldn't franchise tag Calvin Ridley, which should have been the plan. The second you traded for him, the second you traded for him. So he allowed this thing to, to create. He allowed this thing to happen. He went into the season knowing there were two players that could be in line for big old contracts, and you could only franchise tag one of them. And one of them, you had stipulations on when you could re-sign him. So the common sense thing was, I can re-sign Josh at any time. I need to start working on this thing early. And what did he do? He did his end-of-season press conference, sat there, looked us in the face, and said, I haven't even talked to Josh's people yet. And then we're at the Pro Bowl, and Josh is saying, yeah, we need to talk. How does that make sense? What was he doing? Isn't that your main job? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, no, look, you're right. You did great work at the Pro Bowl because you were the one that was getting all those comments from Josh Allen down there. And, and look, here's the thing, Jamal. Again, Jamal St. Sarah of Channel 4 here with us. I won't say I've defended Balky. Defended is an interesting word. I appreciate what Balky has done in this sense. He took over a team that was god-awful. All right, this team sucked when Dave Caldwell was here. Dave Caldwell was one of the worst general managers in the history of the National Football League. So what Trent Baalke inherited was absolutely an atrocious roster. And in two years, he went from one win, his first year as the full-time GM in 2021, to 18 wins combined in 22 and 23. I don't think you can lose sight of that. And I think people have lost sight of that. It was an awful roster that he inherited when he got here. Now, they have not gotten better between 22 and 23. And on the surface, Jamal, I'm not sure how much better they've gotten between 23 and soon to be 24. We'll get to that in a moment. But I do feel it's important for people to understand that Balky has not all been awful. He's not Matt Millen, all right? He's not Dave Caldwell. And I just wanted to point that out. I, look, I agree with you in that vacuum that he has done some good things. And I've tried to, to kind of say, look, at some point we got to walk this thing back that 
there are some positives to Trent Baalke's, uh term here in Jacksonville because he has at least brought the Jaguars back to relevancy. If the Jaguars move on from him, the next front office isn't walking into a barren wasteland and a salary cap problem. Like the, the Jaguars books right now are very clean. The roster has talent. There's a baseline built. He didn't walk into those things. He walked into something that was a problem. Like there was nothing there and he had to figure out where to start. Now, the thing I will say is why I've walked back some of it is because the only places we've really seen Trent hit, he's hitting free agency during this time. I mean, outside of like the miss on Foley Fatukasi and the miss on Shaquille Griffin, like even both of those guys, they were very good leaders in the locker room, well-liked. They wanted to do well. Injuries kind of got in the way. Like those are going to happen, but he's hitting free agency. The draft, he kind of had the one class, and outside of that, it's been a, a little iffy. I mean, the first round picks, you kind of feel pretty good about, but once you get to the second, even the third, you're like, can can you can you get something that helps the team? And that's where general managers have to separate themselves, especially when they're talking about wanting to be a draft and develop team like you need to be to consistently compete in the NFL on a long term basis because free agency is expensive and the Jaguars right now just don't have those, those draft picks. He hasn't been hitting on those. So he's got to figure out a way to get that done starting this year. And that that's his biggest problem. That's the biggest drawback of his, of his term. Yeah, I agree. The draft has left a lot to be desired. Free agency has been good for the most part. Like you said, a couple of misses, a couple more for Jamal St. Cyr of Channel 4. And let's get to free agency. You and I haven't talked about the new guys they brought in. Uh, Mac Jones, backup quarterback, they upgraded that position. I think that's fine. I don't care about giving up a sixth-round pick. I think you and I were in agreement there. People were screaming about yep. a sixth-round pick. Well, the irony of that is people hate Trent Baalke's drafting. So you're screaming about giving up a sixth round pick, but you also think Balky's a terrible drafter. So, so which one is it? Um, now I, let's get to free agency. Outside of Tom Brady, people will struggle to name sixth round draft picks in the NFL. Exactly. Yeah, like I, I, I don't. I don't get the negativity about the Mac Jones thing. They upgraded the backup spot, and people are going to love that if Trevor Lawrence has an ankle sprain, you know, week twelve, right. or it's Mac Jones going in there and not C.J. Beathard. Having said that, now let's get to Monday. Uh, Mitch Morse, I thought, was good, right? Gabe Davis, obviously, we probably need to spend some time on him. And then Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage, and Devin Dumerve. I, I mean, I, younger Jamal Agnew, right, in Dumerve, a younger Rayshon Jenkins in, in Savage. Uh, Ronald Darby is your Darius Williams replacement. I don't think it's been terrible this week. It just looks very bad after yesterday with Ridley. Look, I, I like the moves they've made in a vacuum for the most part. Look, I think DuVernay, like you said, younger. He's actually got more credentials to his name than Jamal Agnew. Already got a couple of Pro Bowls and a first-team All-Pro. Even Jamal Agnew went on social media to say DuVernay is one of his favorite returners in the NFL. So, and, and the one thing about DuVernay is he has more wide receiver upside than Jamal Agnew because he's been playing wide receiver longer. So, uh I think the DuVernay signing is a pretty good one in a vacuum. I think the Darnell Savage signing could work out for the Jaguars. So I And I, I think we were both in agreements that, I, look, I liked Rayshon Jenkins as a person in the locker room. They had to move on to save some money, which is great. He's moving on to Seattle. Darnell Savage moves in for the Jaguars. Savage has speed. He's a former first-round pick. Part of this defense that Ryan Nielsen wants to run is the, a lot of those safeties are going to be hanging over the top in those zones. And Savage can do that at a better clip than what Rayshon Jenkins does. That's just not the strength of Rayshon's game. But that's what Savage does. Every season of his career, he's had at least one interception. So dude's going to go out there and make some plays on football in this Ryan Nielsen defense. They got to go get the pieces that fit what Nielsen does and not the pieces that fit what Caldwell does. So it's good. I, I like that he's going out and getting some of these DBs that are fitting what Ryan Nielsen wants to do. Um, so we'll see. Look, the Gabe Davis one is probably the most interesting one because obviously now he is under a little bit more of a microscope because now he's kind of looked at as the replacement for Calvin Ridley instead of an addition to. But Gabe Davis has made plays down the football field his entire career. Every year in the NFL, he's averaged more than 15 yards a catch. 
the, something the Jaguars have needed is a deep threat wide receiver. And that's exactly what Gabe Davis did, is. And I, look, I've, I've been sitting here think, trying to think. I'm like, when was the last time the Jaguars had a guy that you're like, ooh, that's a good deep threat wide receiver in the NFL? It's been a while. Now you got one. You got one, and you got a guy with 27 career touchdown catches, and he hasn't even turned 25 years old yet. He'll do that next month. Jamal, final question. Um, Ridley was a Gordon Soley shot to the solar plexus for the fan base yesterday, all right? There's no question about that, and I'm sure it was in that building. From all indications, the Jaguars were definitely in the running to try to keep him. The Titans just simply had more money. What now at wide receiver? You know, you and I have talked about Mike Williams, who just got cut in L.A. Cortland Sutton reportedly wants out of Denver. Uh, I think uh, one of the under the radar guys to me is a guy like maybe K.J. Osborne in Minnesota. Not the sexiest name, but a guy's made some plays up there in the Twin Cities. Or do you think it's a situation where they might draft one in round one or round two? This is what I would do. I, I would probably go and try and check in on Mike Williams and Cortland Sutton. I think Cortland Sutton's the home run, right? Um, if, if you get Cortland Sutton or Mike Williams, those are stopgap fixes. This is a really good wide receiver draft. This is a really good wide receiver draft. Could go down as one of the best wide receiver drafts in a while. Um, there are a lot of guys in this draft that you can like. I know people have kind of had the pipe dream about Roma Dunze. Look, I like Malachi Corley a whole lot, but he doesn't really fit what the Jaguars need. If I'm them, I am putting – I'm just hoping that Keon Coleman slides because people are worried about that 40 time. He is the perfect top-shelf receiver, big guy that you go and get. And the more I keep – like, at first I was kind of on the fence about him, and the more I watch and the more I do research on this dude – the more I'm like, he's perfect. Just go get him, especially if you can get him to slide to the second round. Keon Coleman's your home run. You slot him in there, and he's gonna grow and be a great guy for you. Um, so we'll see. But this is a good this is a good year to have a wide receiver problem going into the draft. At 17, there should be somebody there you feel okay about, and if not, try and grab them maybe in the second round. And there's a couple of guys on the market. Uh, like I said, Cortland Sutton's my my home run. Mike Williams, I like, and he would fit. But every time he gets hit, you're going to hold your breath because he's had those injury problems. Jamal St. Cyr of Channel 4. Okay. Jamal, I know it's a busy week with the players and everything going on with the Jaguars. Man, thank you for taking time out for us. We certainly appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Anytime, Hacker. What is this? Jacksonville Sports Radio. We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. With the power to see the planet. Or at least Sports Radio in Jacksonville. They are requesting a call sign. It's, um... 1010XL. It's time for some Spring Fever March specials going on now at Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned. Mia here, and how does this sound? Just $500 down and $288 per month gets you a pre-owned 2021 Toyota Corolla. Or you choose a pre-owned 2021 Camry, RAV4, or Tacoma for just $500 down and $388 per month. Plus, Arlington's Credit for Everyone program and 30-day exchange. Don't wait. Save thousands and shop ArlingtonToyota.com today. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Here's your 1010XL community calendar of local events and nonprofit groups helping people here at home. If you'd like to work for the Jumbo Shrimp this season, bring your resume to One to One Financial Ballpark, Saturday, March 16th from 10 to 1. Learn more at jackshrimp.com. The Wounded Warrior Project provides what medicine and technology can't, community, counseling, and a second chance. Find ways to help at WoundedWarriorProject.org. If you'd like to play in the Northeast Florida Cornhole Tournament at Wingate Park, May 18th, register at Tsunami10U at Mail.com. 
It benefits Tsunami Fast Pitch Softball. If you're between ages 16 and 24, you can learn a career in construction, electrical, plumbing, or masonry with free training from the AMI Kids Florida Registered Pre-Apprenticeship Program. Call 576-7337. There's a critical need for all blood types. Please consider donating at a local blood donation center. You can find out how to share your community event at 1010XL.com. Did you know Prime Roofing manufactures, fabricates, and installs their metal roofs? If you're thinking about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Schedule an estimate today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Fish are good at hiding. Captain Kevin can help you find them. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Find more fish on the Ring Power Fishing Forecast Show. Thursday nights at 6. Brought to you by Awaken 180 Weight Loss on 1010XL AM. Get ready for the Players' Championship, March 12th through 17th at TPC Sawgrass. Don't miss your chance to watch the PGA Tour's best compete to etch their name in history while enjoying a vibrant social scene. From local bites to the latest merchandise available in the PGA Tour fan shop, the Players offers the ultimate experience for everyone to enjoy. Secure your spot today. Tickets are on sale now at theplayers.com. Picking here. You know at Zero Res, they love rugs. Fine oil rugs need to be cleaned with the right equipment and careful training. My guy at Zero Res, Gerard, is a certified master rug cleaner and has been cleaning rugs for more than five years. Don't trust your fine rugs to anyone. Call Zero Res right now. They are offering a BOGO on rug cleaning. Have Zero Res clean one rug, get a second rug for free. What a great time to get your rugs cleaned. Zero Res, man. Spell it forward, spell it backwards. Zero Res. It's the right way to clean. Zero Res. Clear water. John, I can't even mow my side yard. It's so soggy. Man, my builder sucks. Brent, calm down. This is a common problem in neighborhoods where houses are built too close together. You need gutters and a properly installed French drain that will soak up subsurface water. We can completely dry it up. So I can take my builder off my speed dial now, huh? Yeah, we got you, buddy. Let that builder bitterness go. Clear water irrigation and drainage too. Nick and here, the Borland Groover Foundation proudly presents the annual March to Get Screen 5K race and one mile fun run. Sunday, April 14th, the race starts at 7 a.m. under the Fuller Warren Bridge. Their mission, raise awareness about colorectal cancer and related deaths. All proceeds benefit the Borland Groover Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization devoted to building a healthy and equitable community that is free from colon cancer. Visit BorlandGrooverFoundation.com for more. Discover the difference that local expertise makes at First Coast Lighting and Fans. Visit their showroom at the Avenues and browse high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness at First Coast Lighting and Fans. Ball four, take your base. The only thing worse than a pitcher running out of gas on the mound is your old phone running out of storage for your photos in the stands. Goodbye, home run! Switch to Verizon and get a great deal on a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage for all the ballpark picks you want. Just trade in your iPhone, any model, in any condition, so you'll feel like you're winning, even when your team's not. Trade in any iPhone in any condition for a great deal on iPhone 15 Pro with Unlimited Ultimate and get iPad and Apple Watch SE with eligible service plan, only on Verizon. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Boy, the Jaguars were very active on Monday, the first day of the legal tampering period. One of the surprises, I guess was bringing in another safety. Darnell Savage of the Green Bay Packers is on his way to Jacksonville, presumably to be the starter now, replacing Rayshon Jenkins. Let's head up to Green Bay. Andy Herman is our guy up there when it comes to the Packers. He is the host of the Pack-A-Day podcast. You can also check him out at Packer Report, and he's always kind enough to join us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Andy, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Hey, Andy, always appreciate the time. All right, Darnell Savage. Let's talk about the former Packer and the soon-to-be Jacksonville Jaguar. Uh, first and foremost, was it a surprise Savage left Green Bay? He'd spent his entire career there. 
Yeah, great question. No, I, not a surprise. Uh, I think the writing was on the wall a little bit with Savage. I think there seemed to be some mild interest in bringing Darnell Savage back with the Packers usually do in these situations to say, hey, go see what you can get in free agency. Come back. Let us know what your number is. If we're interested, we'll let you know. Uh, but at that number uh, that Darnell Savage got, I don't think Green Bay had any real interest in bringing him back around that price. Uh, they had five years with Darnell Savage in Green Bay, uh, brought him back last year on the fifth-year option, obviously deciding on that a, a couple of years ago. Um, and when they did that, um, I, I think they probably regretted it a little bit. Uh, Savage was not what they sort of expected after that year four, and then they basically were kind of stuck with his contract in year five, couldn't get off of it, was fully guaranteed. Brought him back as the starter last year. And after, you know, playing in uh, Mike Pettin's system, playing in Joe Barry's system the last couple of years, just never really found that rhythm in Green Bay. He does some really good things, does some really head-scratching things, and you just would like to see a little bit more consistency out of him overall. But I think ultimately it felt like it was probably time for both the player and uh, the organization to kind of go in a different direction and, and probably just try something new. We remember, I believe he had the pick six in the postseason, which is the one thing that really yep. stood out about him. I believe PFF had him as the highest graded safety in the postseason last year. Uh, what kind of player is he? What are the Jaguars getting in Darnell Savage? Yeah, I think that word inconsistency pops up a ton. You see a play like he made uh, in San, or excuse me, in Dallas with that huge pick six. And that's the type of plays that he has the capabilities of making. Um, for those of you who are looking for really good Darnell Savage, go back to 2020. Um, and when he played in 2020, coming off his rookie year, his rookie year was in 2019. His second year was in 2020. Um, you really saw a player who was playing with confidence, who felt comfortable, I think, in that second year in the Mike Patton system, was flying around the ball, making plays. They used him a little bit in coverage. He's been used in the slot. He's been used as uh, in, in, in the box safety. They love to use him as a robber a ton. Um, and he does some really good things. The closer he is to the line of scrimmage, usually the better he's going to be. Um, Darnell Savage is a player that if he can play instinctual football and just kind of fly around, things go really, really well. The further he gets away, the more he has to think and diagnose, take good angles to the ball. That's where things start to break down a little bit more. Um, I think one of the things, if you're hopeful from a Jacksonville standpoint, that you can get the best version of Darnell Savage, he, he did not fit in Joe Barry's system where they played a lot of too high safeties. Um, his last year with Mike Patton was his best season. I think it allowed uh, Savage to be a little bit more aggressive that year. Uh, so if Jacksonville is willing to use him in that way, I think there's an opportunity where you can maybe start to see a reemergent, you know, a reemergence of that sort of player uh, and, and somebody who maybe does fly around a little bit more and make some of those plays. In the, the too high safety system that Joe Barry was using, uh, it just never really fit. Like I said, he was further away from the ball. They started to use him in that robber role a little bit more, and that's exactly the where he was when he made that play uh, against Dallas and had the huge pick six. So, um, again, you would love to see a little bit more consistency. Tackling is a huge issue. A huge play that he had against uh, Dallas, or uh, yeah, against Dallas, he had an awful play against San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey, uh, Darnell Savage has him in the hole. Now, you always have to tip your cap to McCaffrey because he's such an amazing player. Uh, but Savage has him one-on-one -on -one in the hole. Probably should have been eight, 10-yard gain. And instead, he makes Savage miss and goes for a touchdown. It was a huge game-changing play in that game as well. And that's sort of the, the juxtaposition you get with Savage. Some really good, some really bad. Andy Herman, host of the Pack-A-Day podcast. You also get him at Packer Report. He's with us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville, talking about the Jaguars' brand-new safety in Darnell Savage. Andy, it sounds like you're saying, uh, I mean, again, obviously the McCaffrey run aside, maybe better against the run than better in pass coverage. How would you assess his game run to pass? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, again, it comes down to sort of him – being able to go and make plays in when I say closer to the line of scrimmage, there are plays where green Bay would send him, whether it be on a blitz or run blitz, and he would be able to fly into the back, you know, into the line of scrimmage. And uh, you can see him really make more aggressive plays and kind of, again, play with that confidence and, and actually go and, and sort of be uh, the hammer rather than the nail. When it's more on the second level, it gets a little bit more passive and you see a Christian McCaffrey make a miss, or you see him take a bad angle or you see him just flat out miss a tackle um, so, again, it feels like he wants to be the player that's coming up and being the aggressor 
and, and, and sort of be the imposer, you know, again, closer to the line. And the further he gets away, the less comfortable he feels. Um, I, I think there's, again, sort of that inconsistency word comes up again. There are times in coverage where you see him man up. There's a play. I remember his rookie year. It looked like he was going to be a phenomenal player. He comes up and he just breaks on a ball. And it looks like, you know, he's just going to be doing this for the rest of his career. And then, you know, again, you see the plays like he did uh, against Dallas with the huge pick six. It's just you don't see, unfortunately, enough of those style of plays um, to really sometimes it, it almost feel like it makes it worth it. And I think that's why probably Green Bay wanted to go in a different direction. They obviously go and get David McKinney. Um, but, again, just some, some high highs and some low lows overall. Andy, I want to end with, with a broad thought on Green Bay, but final thought on Savage. There's a young guy here in Antonio Johnson that the thought is – Maybe Savage could potentially be a mentor or two for a year or two before Johnson ultimately gets a more established role. Now, Savage is still a relatively young guy, right? He's going to be 27, but he's played an awful lot of football. Do you think after five years in the league, he's the kind of guy that'll kind of welcome that leadership role in a relatively young secondary here in Jacksonville? Yeah, I very much think so. And I was a huge fan of Antonio Johnson coming out of college. I thought that was a great pick by Jacksonville. And I do think there's some similarities there. I know Johnson got some work in the slot a season ago in Jacksonville, and we've seen Darnell Savage play a little bit of that as well. Um, so I think you could, you have a, a sort of similar player uh, who likes to do sort of similar things. And I do think Savage will relish that. And I do think he will absolutely relish the opportunity uh, to be a veteran in a secondary to, you know, kind of take on that leadership mantle and to, to, you know, really kind of show some of those younger players, you know, how the NFL goes. And I think sometimes too, you know, he was a, he was sort of the tag team partner with Adrian Amos for a while in green Bay. And, you know, Amos was the veteran. I think Savage kind of took a lot from that relationship. And I think now, he has the opportunity to kind of go be that Adrian Amos maybe in Jacksonville and, and kind of mentor some of those players. So I absolutely think that that would work, and, and hopefully you know, Johnson can take a, a ton from Savage. Final moments, Andy Herman, Packer Report, and the Pack-A-Day podcast here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Maybe the biggest surprise in free agency to this point was Josh Jacobs heading to Green Bay, and in, in um, return, Green Bay releases Aaron Jones, who has since agreed to terms with the arch rival up there, the Minnesota Vikings. Crazy how that happened. But let's begin with Josh Jacobs, Andy. What was the reaction in Green Bay about getting Jacobs there to Lambeau Field? Yeah, it was a whirlwind of a day on Monday. With you, know, you, you get the news that Josh Jacobs is going to be coming. You're certainly not expecting uh, a you know, big-name running back signing. And then there's like about a 35-minute period where everyone's talking about, wow, you know, Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones are going to be, you know, one of the best one-two punch running back duos in the entire NFL. And then, of course, you get that gut punch, and you know, you learn that actually Aaron Jones is going to be released. And then, yeah, you know, 24 hours later, not even you realize that he's going to be uh, a member of your division rival, uh, and that is being the Minnesota Vikings. So that it's been crazy. Obviously, they go get Xavier McKinney as well. Uh, I think there's some excitement clearly about Josh Jacobs. Um, he's coming off, I think, probably the toughest year of his career. I went back and I watched every single rushing snap of his from a season ago. That offensive line was beyond brutal. Uh, I posted a ton of clips over on my uh, Twitter account or X account that showed just how many times that he was in no man's land where he, like there's nothing he possibly could have done, and it was just shocking to see that. Um, but you go back to 2022 and you see an unbelievably dynamic player uh, for Green Bay. They're certainly hoping that they get a 26-year-old 2022 version of Josh Jacobs and uh, not obviously the version that showed up kind of last year. And if they get that, it's probably an upgrade. If they get what we saw last year out of Jacobs, it's probably a downgrade from Jones. So a very interesting decision, but um, sort of a classic GM move to go with the younger player uh, at 26 rather than Jones, who's ready to go on age 30. Andy, final question. For three decades in Green Bay, it was Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. And the thought was, finally, Green Bay has got to have problems at quarterback. And then, lo and behold, Jordan Love does what he did at the end of the year. And people are saying, are you kidding me? Did they really get another one? Now, it's lofty praise to think Jordan Love could be Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers, but he certainly looked the part at times towards the end of last season. What's the thought on him heading into 24? Yeah, he really did, and, and certainly a small sample size. It was really the second half of the year that he really started to come along. But, man, that end of the season, that, that playoff game against Dallas, you could really start to see the game slow down for him. And I just remember a play against that, that Cowboys team in the playoffs where 
Uh, he throws a touchdown to Dontavian Wicks, and just as his poise, he sees the defense. He sees exactly what they're going to do. It's going to be a blitz. He checks out of it, actually calls an audible that hadn't been put in the playbook since earlier in the season, but he remembered it based on that look, and he calls that, gets everyone aligned, knows he's going to get hit, backpedals, takes the hit, throws perfectly over a defender, and hits uh, Dontavian Wicks in stride for a beautiful touchdown. Those are the type of, you know, sort of crazy – unbelievable plays that for three decades we did see from Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think anyone's quite ready to put him in that league as of yet. You have to have the longevity in order to do that. But in the, those moments, you see it very clear. And it's super exciting in Green Bay that you have a quarterback that could potentially at least even be mentioned with those two right now. And we'll see what it becomes, and we'll see how defenses adjust to him in his second year as a starter. I'm sure some defensive coordinator at some point is going to figure out something to make it stop, and then they're going to have to counter it, and he's going to have to overcome it, just like pretty much every quarterback has to do. Uh, but a lot of excitement in Green Bay for Jordan Love right now. Andy Herman, the Pack-A-Day podcast. Also, you can check him out at Packer Report. He's our guy when it comes to the Green Bay Packers. Andy, we appreciate the insight on Darnell Savage. Thank you, my friend. We'll do it again around division preview time this summer. Hey, can't wait. Thanks so much. And thank you to Andy Herman of the Pack-A-Day podcast, also from Packer Report, for joining us tonight here on Hacker After Dark to talk a little Darnell Savage, the brand new, you would assume, starting safety for the Jacksonville Jaguars and what has been just a very interesting week here with Jacksonville. A lot of additions, obviously, a lot of subtractions, the loss of Calvin Ridley. We'll see what happens moving forward, but man alive, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis, Eric Armstead, Darnell Savage, Ronald Darby, Devin Duvernay, uh, Mac Jones, a lot of additions that Trent Baalke and this Jaguar staff made over the last five or so days. Well, that'll just about do it. It has been a very busy evening here on Hacker After Dark. We certainly appreciate you guys for hanging out with us here on a Friday and really all week long on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. We have a ton of people to thank tonight. Again, Andy Herman, the Pack-A-Day podcast, also Packer Report for joining us up in Green Bay. Thank you to Jamal St. Cyr of Channel 4 for stopping by. Jamal is certainly one of our guys here on Hacker After Dark, and we always enjoy talking Jaguar football with Jamal. Luke Jones, WNST Radio in Baltimore, talking about the arrival of Derrick Henry in Baltimore, but the also arrival of Ronald Darby and Devin Duvernay, two former Ravens that are now both here in Jacksonville and back in hour number one, my buddy Cecil Shorts, former wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You get him every week here on Hacker After Dark during the season, and we'll have Cecil on probably about once a month or so in the off season leading up to August. We will be back on Monday, and we will do it all over again beginning at 8 o'clock, and we do hope that you join us then. Dylan Denmark was your producer tonight. Dylan, great job as always. I'm the hacker Ryan Green, and again, Jacksonville, thank you for spending part of your Friday evening with us and your entire week with us here on Hacker After Dark, and as always, we can't tell you enough how much We appreciate it. So for all of us here at HAD, have an absolutely terrific remainder of your Friday evening and a fantastic weekend. And we will talk to you again Monday night right here on 1010XL beginning at 8 o'clock. Until then, good night, Jacksonville. Starting the day with sports. You can't beat me. You are a laughing stock. Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Because I'm a winner. You are a joke. Mornings. I'll always be a winner. These people are laughing at you. On 1010XL. You have no ability, nothing. Attention all business owners. The raining season is coming and it's important to ensure that your property storm drains are free from debris and functioning properly. That's where Duck Duck Rooter comes in. Our powerful VacCon truck can effectively clean out your storm drains and prevent costly damage to your property from flooding. Don't let clogged storm drains ruin your business and reputation. Call Duck Duck Rooter today to schedule a cleaning before the rains hit. 904-862-6769 or online at duckduckrooter.com. 
Ready to spice up your Wednesday? Head to Players Grill for Wing Wednesday. Enjoy mouth-watering wings for just 75 cents each. Plus, make it a happy hour all day long. Cheers to unbeatable deals and good times. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. I was on the go. It was time to eat. I said, baby, grandma, damn it, cause they can't be beat. She got something else when it was time to choose. And after just one bite, I got the soggy sandwich blue. Should have known better, only Danny will do. Got that hometown flavor creeping up on you. Yeah, she done me wrong. Didn't get my dandy. I need my ham and cheese. That's all he wanted. That's all he wanted. Should have known that only then they will do. Got that hometown flavor creeping up on you. Yeah. This NFL free agency profile is brought to you by Universal Roof and Contracting. Experience the universal difference. Jacksonville's running attack stays strong with Travis Etienne leading the charge. And re-signing Dearness Johnson lays a solid foundation. The 